Today, we're going to talk about restoration. I think one of the most important jobs that I have here at Beaver is being a custodian. And I always am looking for a team of people to help me look after the beauty that surrounds me in my home. And right now, there are two very talented ladies who've come up from Suffolk that I'm going to go and meet and talk to them about how they can help me with this rug. The rug that was actually made for the Elizabeth Saloon. Let me tell you, it's in shreds in parts. So I need to find out exactly what I need to do and how much this is going to cost. I do hope that you will enjoy this conversation. So Kerry, thank you so much for coming up today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and exactly what you do? So I work for um, the Rug and Carpet Studio in Long Melford. Um, I've been there about 20 years now. So where exactly is that, Kerry? So that's in Suffolk, over near, um, just south of Bury St Edmunds. Um, Sarah's had the business for 25, um, nearly 25, 26 years. Um, she learnt her skill by going and staying out with the Kashkai tribe out in Iran um, and learnt the construction of them and the history of them. And then she set up on her own um, in a barn at her father's house um, and then developed it from there. So um, more recently, as uh, different people have taken have joined the company, we've developed it by joining ICON, the Institute of Conservation, um, and just developing the techniques by learning newer um, more up-to-date conservation techniques as well as restoration. So there's quite a difference between conservation and restoration. Amazing. As we've been through today here. Yes. So how long have you been restoring carpets, Kelly? I've been with business for 20 years. Um, I have a background in textiles and, um, and theatre costume, actually, is where I started out. So, yeah, I've, I've been actually with the business for 20 years. Amazing. So sort of West End costumes. Um, I was in Liverpool, so I trained up in Liverpool and worked in the theatres up in Liverpool. Up Shakespearean? Um, some, yes, and some modern plays as well. So we did, um, we did some opera work, we did some uh, things like that. So Amazing. This room, I think, most probably is my favourite room in the castle, and mainly because of this lady here called Elizabeth. And the, ne the room is actually named after her. It's called the Elizabeth Saloon. And the sad bit of the story is that she passed away just before it was completed. So she never actually got to see what it looked like, which is tragic. She but if you look up at the ceiling, Kerry, uh, there she is there actually lying with her lover. But on the ceiling, all the children with wings are the ones that died sadly she had 11 children and all the children without wings are the ones that survived and um, I rather love the fact that her husband was so devoted to her he had that amazing marble effigy of her carved in Italy and brought over for the completion of the room and the clever use of the mirror the floor to ceiling mirror behind her which makes her feel as if she's in the room with you all the time. Yeah, I love this room. But the saddest thing about heritage, for me, I, I'm very practical and I don't always know enough or I don't know exactly the, the right terminology or the right restoration terminology, is the carpet, because it's exquisite. Because it was made for the room. But tell me a little bit about it. It's a beautiful carpet and, and you can see that it's made for the room and, and knowing now knowing the history of the, the room, it's, it's, it, it is a beautiful carpet. It's, a, it's an Axminster carpet, um, probably from the early 1800s. Um, the Axminster carpets are made on small looms, so about 70 centimetres wide, and then they're joined together. So the design is created and then split into the separate rooms and then 
And then once they're made on the different, once the pieces are made, they're put back together again to make this size carpet. It's quite unusual to have such a huge carpet. They, they tend to make slightly smaller ones. Um, and like you say, it's, it's obviously been made for the, for the room. Um, so it is a machine made carpet. It's one of the oldest machine made carpets that there are. The Axminster carpets were um, one of the first ones to be created on that kind of scale. Um, it's quite, it's made with a jute foundation, jute, jute and wool foundation. So the warp, the weft threads are jute. Um, they tend to break down a little quicker than the wool. So that's why in the areas that there's damage, the jute found at the jutes, the splits are along the line of the jute. So it's the jute that's broken down and then the wool is actually quite stable. And so that's why we've got those little piles of wool in the areas of the, the damage. So that's why the wool is... Such as that area there. Yeah, so that's why the wool is complete. That's why you can still see the woolen threads, but the jute foundations that run across that are broken and that's what's causing the splits. I see. And so also in the areas where the... Where the pieces are joined, where at the, at the various different joins across the carpet, that's where it's breaking down as well because the joins have become unstable. And so that's an area that we need to look at as well for stabilising. So just advise me on what you think I should be doing with this carpet. I think the fact that the carpet has been made for the room and with the story of the room itself it would be a really lovely thing to be able to conserve it so that you could carry on using the room and carry on enjoying the history of the carpet. I think our our option is mostly to, like I say, to stabilise it. So we would do some couching threads, which is a thread that lays on top of the carpet and it catches down the damage to stop that damage deteriorating any further. Um, so it will be it will enable you to carry on using the carpet. Um, it will stop the damage being any getting any worse and we could still use the room you can it. still use the room i think we um might look at having a different underlay i think one of the problems that some of the damages occurred is because the carpet's moving on the underlay and moving on the floor underneath it it's causing rucks in the carpet and then as that's being walked on that's causing further damage so we'll have a look at replacing the underlay and as well. just a simple thing over i'm just looking at it because at the moment this is one of our major rooms for our big Christmas event here, which is um, which is sort of the, it's like the cherry on the cake. This room really in the castle, but we could literally move all the furniture out and move the whole rug because it's a rug down, so the public can come in and walk in on the wooden floor and just move the whole thing. I know things won't be quite as centralised and obviously everything's echoed it from was, above, yeah. isn't it? And that's if we moved it slightly to one side, it would also um, move the, pat the areas of where, so where the sofas are placed and where the chairs are placed, the damage has occurred where the pieces of furniture ah, are right. and the furniture are being moved. Right. So if we were to move it slightly to one side, those areas would then be either under the furniture or just away from the legs, yeah. so that would be a it good idea. It would help sort of address this situation. I hate things not being lined up and correct because it's so obvious that that wonderful circle in the middle of this rug should be under there. It should be. One of the other things that we could do is um, we could, um, Pat's discussed with you about replacing carpets, having copies made. One of the other things we could do is to make an area, um, to copy an area that then sits on top of the carpet. So if people were to be walking in just inside the door there, they would come in and stand on something that wasn't the actual carpet okay, itself. So, so you could do a walkway into we could, this room. Yes, yeah. Oh, well, we should look at. The, I should love to have a price on. We'll that. have a look at that. That's yeah, really yes. lovely yeah. idea. Yeah. So just a broad brush figure, which I'm not going to hold you to. What are we going to be looking at to restore this carpet, price-wise? We're going to look at several different options um, because we're discussing whether to work in situ. That alters some of the prices slightly because we have to cover various different things about working in situ. Um, but we're, we're going to be looking in the high thousands. We'll be working a, a week at a time in situ um, and there'll be maybe three or four of us coming up. And so it's going to be an expensive option. Um, but it's... <laughs> it's Should I be putting... I've got to put it in my budget, you see, and the accountants are tapping me on the shoulder saying, 
have you got everything in? So what sort of thousands? Just So possibly um, kind of up to 20, 25,000, something oh my like goodness. that. goodness. But it so desperately needs doing. It's a beautiful carpet as well. And it's always a very difficult... It, in big homes like this that are being used, that have the history of the room and the history of the carpet, it's, it's a very difficult decision whether to carry on restoring it because it's obviously something that's going to continue to to break down over time and yeah. so it's it's always quite so a difficult decision. it's an ongoing decision. issue. It is an ongoing issue. But I always say that we can't be held to ransom in a house like this by a carpet. No, absolutely not. So we must carry on using the room. Yes, yeah. And that's that's the options that we have with replacing it with something that is is a direct copy because then the history of the piece continues because the story behind the room and the, the carpet that's designed to go in the room continues because then you have you have a direct copy that you can then have the same discussion about and why it was designed, like you say, to match the ceilings and things. So so that is that is always another option and that's one of the reasons that why we've developed that option for you. Well, I'm very you. excited to have your feedback and delighted to have you here. It's, uh, it's lovely to be here. <laughs> it's a real... Um, you don't know sometimes where to turn when you have an issue like this. It's not any... It's not... Uh, you can see going round the carpet where our wonderful Lady Jane, who was here for years on her knees, most probably doing more damage than good, but doing her best to stabilise it. She has done some fantastic repairs, actually. Oh, Having a look wonderful. at it, she has I'll done tell some her. Really She'll be repairs. so delighted. I mean, she's very talented. She'd love to meet you when you come. But in a, in a house like this, it's... Um, it's almost a full-time job, isn't it? It would be, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and how long, Kerry, do you think it'll take, start to finish, to restore this rug? So I think if we, like we've said about working in situ, I think if we came in and worked, um, it would maybe take us a couple of visits, so maybe three weeks at the most. To, to repair it? I would imagine so, yeah. Amazing. As a, an expert like you, it's, for me, a joy to have you here, to be able to for you to share with me the things that surround me every day and I'm blind to really. So is there anything I should be looking at with this rug and thinking, wow, that's amazing? It's very special to, to see one of the early Axminster carpets. They're, they're always an absolute joy to see because, because they've stood the test of time for, for one thing, in a, in a room that's obviously has quite a lot of use, it's done its job, it's a robust thing, but also a thing of absolute beauty. It's, it's an amazing thing to see. And with the, the peacocks in the, the design in the corner. Well, the peacocks it's are family crest. And so you'll find peacocks. I think there's hundreds of peacocks, even in the gilding around the top of the room. They're everywhere. They were given a very clear brief about the peacocks, weren't they? They're in every corner of this carpet. And do you think this was made, this little rug that goes in front of the fire, was this made later? I think these were these would have been made later. Um, the, the two of them, the two matching ones in front of the fireplaces, they would have been made later. And it is exactly for that reason. It's a hearth rug to save the carpet underneath so that um, the fire doesn't... So that's really what we're it. going to look at doing. On a walkway across there. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You're doing stately homes like this all over the country. I think you were at a recent one and fit us, fitted us in, or I couldn't fit in with you last week. Do you ever get bored of your job? Absolutely not. No. Each job is completely different. So we work on very small domestic rugs that people have bought in. Um, that they've just bought because they like them. Um, we have other um, customers that bring rugs in um, into the workshop that are um, pieces that have been handed down and have got stories of their own and they, they love them or they've picked them up on their travels and so they've got their own history with the rugs. Coming out to big houses like this is always just an absolute joy to see them and such a variety of carpets no two carpets are ever the same so and rating the places that you have been to where does this come on the line this is quite high up yeah the drive up to the the castle itself is just amazing and the view out of out of the, the castle is just absolutely amazing it's really wonderful belvoir belvoir beautiful view <laughs> So why is it important for you restoring pieces like this? What does it give you? I've grown up with an interest in history. Um, I'm still 
enormously interested in the history of pieces. Each piece that we see has its own story. And I think for myself, it's important for those pieces to carry on passing their story on to the next generation. I think it's important to hold on to our history and to pass that on to, to people that are learning about it now. That's so nice. Well, it's a joy. Thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, let's, let's get this show on the road, as they say. Absolutely. It's lovely to see it. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next episode.